You're listening to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast, a podcast for those who are in and around the hospitality industry who love, live, and breathe what they do. You can join us for candid and unscripted conversations with hospitality experts and founders as we go deeper into their personal stories while they're sharing their triumphs and trials that got them to where they are today. I'm your host, Will Slickers, and you're listening to an episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. Now, let's begin. All right, Slick Talkers, we are back at the one and only BRMA event where we come to every year and we sit down with the biggest, the baddest, and the best founders in hospitality, short-term rentals, obviously. And I am sitting now with Sean Renner, who is going to tell me the story of Avant Stay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What an introduction. Good to be here. Verma, we've been doing this for quite a few years now. Rarely have I done a podcast, so thank you for setting this up. Of you're, course. you're the man of the show. It's of cool. Course. Well, we were talking a little bit last night, and I was like, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while, so why not? Let's just do this. Easy does it. Easy does it. So, Sean, let's talk about the story, because I was just listening to you talk to Paul Stevens, and talking about, you know, business isn't easy. And so, for the listeners out there, tell us about the inception of Vermont Day, and then kind of where you guys are today. Yeah, so I would say business Business overall, the industry has gone through so many undulations of of success and really momentum. And then we've seen, you know, most recently the hurricanes have been a huge impact on our space in Florida and North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia. Uh, we've seen a lot of natural disasters over the years. Uh, and then obviously the space itself has, has come out of, you know, pandemics and and popped and been the most exciting, exhilarating, you know, highest revenue and ADR increases that we've ever seen in, in the industry's history to flatlining and seeing a lot of companies go public and, and really not be successful in the public markets. This year for us has been the fastest growing year we've ever had in company history. So business for us recently, uh, as we've kind of settled into our enterprise platform, our brand, and really where we focus, which is at the luxury segment of the market, it's been, been the best year in, in company history for us. To take a step back and talk a little bit about Avant Stay's history. So I grew up in a big household, four younger brothers, really kind of a crazy, fun environment. And we travel, travel around staying in, you know, kind of three, three-star hotels and motels. And, and you're chasing people around. You're wondering where Josh is. Where's Ryan? Jake's sleeping in the room. Somebody sends security up and and I meet the lobby at 6.30 for dinner and nobody shows up. And so it was always a very, you know, very kind of antiquated, low-level hospitality experience that became stressful in a lot of ways. Like it was, it was not as fun as you'd think traveling with a large family. And so we started staying in vacation rentals. Uh, and we realized that it was a much better way to travel for a large family, for a large group yeah. family. And at that point, we, we had a couple great stays and then we had a couple really bad stays. And it, my background has been tech enabled real estate for many years. My last company, I sold to LinkedIn, which was an enterprise SaaS company nice. in 2016. We built a sales productivity and enablement solution. And then I worked on Wall Street. So I worked wow. in tech banking, Morgan Stanley, investment banking. So I've always been in and around the space of finance, real estate and technology and a huge passion for travel. Uh, I have 20 something cousins, I don't even know how many. So we have a big family, we travel a lot and tech, you know, led me to this opportunity. And I remember, I'll give Scott Shatford a plug, founder and, and CEO of, of AirDNA, shout out to Scott. Scott's become one of, you know, the, the pioneers of the industry. And, and, and I sat down with him and I was running data and I remember the data came out in Indio, California, and it was one of the most compelling areas to invest in the country. Do you know where Indio is? I've heard of it. You know where Coachella Festival is? Oh, yeah. So that's Indio. Oh, I never knew that was <laughs> Right? So most people don't know that's Indio. And we went to Indio. How clean is it? Is it perfectly clean with, you know, professional kind of sophisticated management company? And, and what services do you provide? Now we're providing golf cart service to the back of the stage in the artist section at Coachella Festival, and the entire industry has evolved to this elevated experience, and you have to meet those demands. And once we got into it, we realized that you needed to build tech, 
There was a lot of point solutions. They were antiquated. And so we got into fundraising mode. We built an enterprise platform. We built the Avance brand. We really liked the luxury premium segment of short-term rentals. And now we're close to 2,500 homes. We're in 45 markets, over 150 cities, and we service over a million guests per year. And we're growing faster than we've ever grown before. And maybe we're in our control, growing too fast at times. And and now, you know, even things that were out of our control, whether it's hurricanes or, you know, fires and pandemics, but couldn't be more thrilled about where the industry's at. It's it's delivering more revenue than in history, but there's also more short-term rentals than in history. And and we feel really good about kind of, you know, where the industry's at and obviously where Avance sits in that, in that, in that part of the industry. There's so much to unpack. So that was a to... long intro, but you asked it. a couple no, questions. I loved it. I loved it. I was like, man, where do I start? Because I want to ask you so many questions from selling a company to LinkedIn to where the industry is today. So I guess we'll just stick with the industry today because I don't have that much time. With it. So where the industry is today and like what you guys have built with Avant State, you know, raising money from investors. What you do need to do is you do need to build, you need to build infrastructure at a pace that allows you to kind of you know, match growth and, and be, and build a sustainable business. So one of the things that we did was we raised a, a lot of capital we've raised, you know, not to get into, into all the details, but, but a lot of capital and, and, and we, yeah, it's, it's, it's out there, some of it. And, and and we, we built, uh, we started building an enterprise technology platform, a team launching markets. We built prop codes, you know, a billion dollar plus to kind of, we were always able to deliver it an elite experience, but we had to do a lot of it through manual processes and, and human capital and resources that were quite expensive. And now we've been able to deliver, we have 105,000 five-star reviews. We're the highest rated national manager in the country, 4.8 stars. I don't think anybody's done that at, you know, at scale, which is, you know, a million guests per year, about a hundred thousand stays per year. And so it's a differentiated because we've filled the gaps and we built the infrastructure uh, to deliver scale and with scale comes a lot of benefits, whether that's, you know, concierge or yeah. amenities or loyalty, or, you know, let's say sometimes people show up to a market and we have, you know, a hundred homes and the water goes out on home. We can upgrade you yeah. like you would in a first class seat in, in flying an airline. We can upgrade you to a better home. So there's, there's never a time where you show up and you book a home. And if you don't have that many homes and, and you're disappointed because we really take a lot of pride in terms of delivering you know, this five-star experience. And we just recently won, you know, Comparent, which shout out to Comparent, Brooke, you built a, a great business over there as one of the top, or I think it's the top manager, national manager in the country from a review perspective. But it took seven, almost eight years of, of blood, sweat, tears, and a lot of hard work to get here. And, and I think we're more energized and excited than we've ever been to like keep going and keep evolving and keep generating a better experience and, and obviously more revenue for homeowners and more revenue for homeowners enables us to, to continue to lean into to building a better experience for guests. I love it. And so, Sean, I want to ask you a question around scale since you brought it up. The question has always been like, can we scale this industry? Can a property management company be the scale of a Marriott or a Hilton? And I think like, yeah, it's like, it's not going to be overnight, but I also think we need to change the definition of scale. A hundred homes doesn't even equal to one hotel building sometimes because one hotel building can have 150 rooms. So what's your thoughts on scaling in short-term rentals? Obviously there's less pools in the bot state play now. So yeah, you guys have proved it. Yeah, I think, I think scale really matters long-term because the reason why, you know, airlines uh, can perform is because they have scale. The reason why Marriott, I'm a Bonvoy member exactly. is because I like my points. And I can get perks when I show up. So now that we have scale, we're able to deliver a unique differentiated experience that remains affordable, but that's elite. And scale does that. And the definition of scale, you know, is probably more around revenue than anything. You know, if you're, you know, 150,000 a unit and you have, you know, a thousand homes, that's 150 million in revenue. And so... I think the quantum of scale should be defined by revenue. I do think it's very challenging to run a horizontal operation, which is what single family residential short-term rentals is. And that is, 
you know, about 75% of our business. And then the other 25% is kind of differentiated, unique, you know, multifamily with rooftops and pools and services. And, and so we do have a lot of that product now as well, especially in Nashville. But, but in order to, to kind of, you know, have that scale, deliver loyalty, deliver a unique differentiated experience, you have to break through to the other side. And, and it's, it's kind of hard to get to that other side unless you either have capital raised or extreme amounts of density. And so you can't be in 10 to 15 markets across the country and have 10 units in each market. Yeah. Uh, however, some of the best operators in the country have hundreds of units in one market because they have that density. So they have scale in one market. So again, redefining scale should be, do you have scale in one market and then you have scale? I don't think that somebody who has 300 homes in 20 markets has scale. I do think that somebody has 200 homes in one market has scale. So redefining that and do it from a strategic perspective where you understand what it means to have scale. What it means to have scale is Amazon is the best example of that. You show up, you know, Amazon didn't always do same day delivery. This is new and, and I love it. And I think you get to a point where next day delivery, same day delivery, that has to do with density and scale and you can deliver that elevated experience with density and certainly density then enables you to deliver more partnerships. Some of the stuff that we're doing now is black tie ski rentals to your front door, you know, in your scheme. And, and that's very easy to do for us because we can integrate with a company that has, you know, regional density and it's a click of the button as opposed to, you know, when we first started, that was a very challenging thing to do. No scale, no tech, no integrations. And your skis, they're just standing in line at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the gondola. And you're going to wait an hour to get your skis, depending on where you're at. But Big Bear, about two hours. <laughs> no, I love it. And I, I love that you're touching on the services piece that around, you know, like delivering skis or catering the, 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 the fridge and this, or stocking the fridge during the catering. Because I think right now, like, what are your thoughts on the industry as it is today? Because as a kind of a final thought here and question for you is, a lot of these managers here at VR Man struck like they are just struggling with ADRs, they're struggling with new inventory, they're struggling with all this. But they want, and they usually started out by doing the fun things with one home, two homes, whatever, focusing on concierge services, taking care of their guests, and they want to get back to them. I think that's missing right now. What are your thoughts and overall perspective of how the industry can get there to actually become more hospitable and less operational and cleaning toilets? Yeah, well, I think the industry, it's very easy to win. There's like a honeymoon phase. Yeah. <laughs> and the honeymoon phase is for the first 12 to 18 months, it's really easy because I have high energy and you might have found a, you know, a couple great people. But, but how do you do that over a long, sustainable period of time? Well, I think you really have to be passionate, dedicated, and, and be willing to work incredibly long hours for long periods of time. This is hospitality. Yeah, yeah. This is not, you know, build Instagram and flip the switch and all of a sudden sell it to Facebook for a yeah. billion dollars overnight. Yeah. Hospitality is hard work. So if you're not passionate about hospitality, you're in it for the wrong reasons, you're probably not going to succeed because it's really hard. It's like, Think about restaurants. Managing restaurants are not fun, but if you're passionate about food and people, you can be successful. So I, I do think that the industry itself is still arguably the most fragmented industry at scale in terms of total TAM in the world. There's not a more fragmented industry that, that kicks off hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue anywhere in the world. So I think if there's going to be success, there may need to be consolidation. You start walking around Burma and you start to see some of the partnerships that are being created. You can't do everything all at once. And even when we came out of the gate, we did everything. We did design, we did acquisitions, we did prop codes, we did concierge. And so we've gotten back to really our core competency, which is serving our homeowners and guests and partnering with folks around that. And I think consolidation is key. I also think that, you know, if you're going to build a company uh, you have to know what you're go what you're trying to build. Do you want to build a regional company, a national company? Do you want to build, you know, to 50 units or hundreds of units? I think you can build successful companies at 50, but if you're going to hundreds, you then have to invest in accounting and technology and insurance, and you have to have massive 
compliance around all the different components of the business that are required. And that comes at a pretty heavy expense. So I do think that consolidation will continue to happen. Partnerships are key. And so walking around here, it's one thing that we've been focused on is, is who are the best partners for us. But I don't think that you can just enter the short-term rental market today and think that you can go make a lot of money and get to 50 units, you know, overnight and let that be a sustainable operation. Like you really have to be in it for the right reasons and know what you're trying to accomplish. I love it. John, last question I always ask every guest, where can the listeners connect with you? If they want to talk or connect or learn more about you and the, the brand you built. Bonsai. Yeah. So at Avonstay on Instagram, at Avonstay on TikTok, YouTube. Uh, you'll see us all over social media. You can follow us, new house launches, special giveaways, discount codes. And we'll, we'll get a discount code awesome. for, for your listeners. So we'll send that out as well. And then www.avonstay.com. Uh, you can follow me at S Bruner, S B R E U N E R. I'm traveling around and, and trying product and meeting folks like yourself. Yeah. So that's always a good way. But yeah, we'll make sure everybody gets a discount code, of course, and, and check us out on social and, and follow the journey. It's, it's still the best industry in the world to be a part of. And what's better than getting together with your family, showing up, open up the fridge and it's stocked and start your vacation right away. What's better than that? What's better than that? Well, you're going to be hyped up to say, like, let's go on vacation. Let's, let's go on let's vacation. Go yeah. We're working though. All right, Sean. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening and thank you to our show partners for making Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast possible. We hope you enjoy the show and we would love to connect with you outside of the podcast. So you can follow us on all of our social media channels for daily hospitality content or find us on slicktalkthepodcast.com. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm your host, Will Slickers, and we will see you guys all again next week.